Hi everyone, welcome to the Mindset Marketing and Money Podcast. I'm Alison Wood from NicheLifeSuccess.com and I bring you helpful information to guide you as you build a business online or create a side hustle or two. So today I wanted to talk to you about tips for setting up your first blog. If blogging is something that you want to do, I still believe that now is an amazing time to do it. You might think, well, you know, there's loads of different blogs out there and that's very true, but there is still scope for people, particularly if you've got something that you're very keen on sharing. You know, you've got a passion about something and you know that you can write about that topic into the future. Now, the things that I'm going to talk about today are more from a blogging perspective. However, some of them would be relevant if you have a business and you want to set up your first website. So even if your, you know, your topic is something completely different, maybe you you offer a service or something like that, some of the tips that I'm going to be talking here will help you to think about setting up your first site. Although obviously some of the niche related things will not be so helpful for you. Although there is nothing to stop you adding a blog onto your website and that can definitely help you in terms of getting found in the search engines, adding fresh content to your website. So even if you have a business that is very much service-based or even around sort of a brick and mortar store, the fact that you are blogging on it can help to bring you more readers. So don't discount that. However, what we are going to be talking about today is very much more niche blogging, so related to a certain topic. So first of all, why am I talking about this? This is kind of one of my passions. I started blogging back in 2009, so a very long time ago now. The landscape was very different. The tech was very different. It was much more difficult to get started. But I found that I absolutely loved it. I loved writing about topics that I was interested in. I love the kind of, you know, the tech side that I've learned along the way. But I also love the challenge of it. I love all aspects of it. So the writing, but also, you know, choosing what to write about, finding the images, getting the word out about it, you know, on socials, building an email list, that side of it, all of it, I absolutely love. And I will say that you might not love every single aspect of it, but if you are going to build a blog, make sure it is about something that you are interested in and you can see yourself writing about for the long term. So I've got blogs in sort of the pet niche, in the lifestyle niche, and all of those things I enjoy writing about. There are, you know, there might not be passions in every single sense, but I still love writing about the topics. I still enjoy researching the topics. So if you've got something that might not be anything related to what you do for work, but it is related to something that you are really, really interested in, that it's something that isn't just, you know, something that you've come up with and you think, well, you know, maybe I could write a few posts about that. If you're serious about blogging, you want to be writing far into the future. So you want to know that you will have an interest in that topic as you move forward. Now, obviously, you can outsource your blogging as your site grows and you get more income. So all those things are potentials. However, in the first instance, you are going to be doing a lot of the work. And it's so much easier to do the work when you're writing about something you love. So although we are going to be talking talking about choosing a niche, I want you to keep that in your mind about the fact of what you want to do going forward. So as I said, I've been blogging a long time, still something that I love, still is an area that I'm learning about all the time because things evolve in blogging and I I think that's also what makes it a challenge. So first of all, we are going to come straight into it 
and we are going to decide on our niche. Niche, if you're in, a, in the US, but this is your topic that you're going to be writing about. Now, just a few tips here. Don't go too wide, as in your blog needs to be recognizable for a topic that you're writing about. It needs to be recognizable for your audience and it needs to be recognizable for Google and the other search engines so that they understand what you're offering. So when I say don't go too wide, don't, you know, don't try and start like a food blog combined with a fashion blog combined with a beauty blog combined with writing about your dog. (laughs) That's too wide, much, much too wide. However, there are people that go to the other extreme and they go too narrow. So let's just take the theme of pets. My site is generally about pets. However, you could narrow it down and you could write about dogs or cats or horses. Or you could write about a specific breed of dog, let's say, for example. And in that case, you could go into breed characteristics and training and products for that dog. However, what I wouldn't do is go so niche. In some ways, niche, the more niche, the better. But you've got to give yourself the scope over the long term. So if, you know, I was writing about just um, Labrador toys, that's going to be quite niche because there's going to come a point when you are going to run out of toys to write about. So in your domain, give yourself a little bit of scope to to broaden out from there. And you might start out writing purely about Labrador toys. But if your, your domain name is not too narrow, you've got that scope to widen it out later on as you go along. So The key things I'm going to say, which I said at the beginning, is make sure that it's something that you're interested in, either something that you know very well, that you are, you could be an expert on it, or you are very interested in researching about it, or it is something that people come to you to ask about. Might not be something that is your profession or you've done as a job, but it could be something that people ask you about like you're great with decorating your house so people always come to you for tips on that or you're you know a really keen home mechanic and you're going to write about you know keeping on top of your car or choosing a car all those kind of things so just have a think maybe jot down like five or ten areas where Firstly, you would be interested in writing about it. And secondly, you think you could write about it over the long term. Now, I say write. You can also, not so much a theme for this, but you, if you don't want to write at all, maybe you should think about going down a YouTube channel or a podcast channel. It doesn't always have to be writing, but if we're focusing on a blog, it's more going to be centered on that. So if you're thinking like, oh, this sounds quite interesting, I would like to share my knowledge on blah, but I never want to be a, to write about it, then just think about those other options. So that's that's it in terms of niche. Now, I'm going to go through quite a few things today. And obviously on a podcast, it's great to listen, but it's not always easy to get the full amount of information. So what I'm going to suggest is that you sign up for my free course, Blog for Profit. Now this walks through step by step. There's like a mini video every day that drips out to you and you just watch the video and obviously you can take a a few more notes or you can just listen along and it's going to go through everything step by step and it's going to give you time to process it. So whereas I'm just talking to you now and you might gain certain bits of nuggets of information as we go along, if you want to actually get started or you think you might want to get started and you want to just dive in a bit more, then do grab that course completely free and it just walks you through this process. So if you want to get that, head to Niche Life Success. So Niche is N-I-C-H-E, Life, L-I-F-E, Success, 
blog.com forward slash profit, P-R-O-F-I-T, because that is blog for profit. So once you've decided on your niche, then the next thing to think about is your domain name. Now, your domain name is your URL. It is your address on your on the, the big wide world web, <laughs> world wide web, get that right. Um, so Niche Life Success, for example, is my domain name, is my URL, and that's where you can find me. So again, have a think about that. Make it obviously relevant to your niche, unless you've got like a brand name or something like that, that's more relevant to you because you're a business. But if you're going for a blog, then just have a think around probably bringing the topic into it. Again, don't um, don't go too narrow. Give yourself some scope. Even if you think you might not want scope now, you might want scope as your, your blog grows and you want to write around more topics. So as I say, don't go too wide that people don't understand what it is. But on the other hand, make sure that you're not boxing yourself in too narrowly. Now, I've only got really a couple of things to talk about here. Obviously, in the early days of blogging, there are a lot of niche niche domains available. Um, Now it's getting more difficult. So you might have to sort of try different things, you know, add different phrases of words in. And just have a look around. So go with your sort of basic topic and see what comes up for you. Obviously, a .com is great. Or if you're in the UK or another destination, use your country specific extension if you want to. Even though I'm based in the UK, most of my traffic comes from kind of the key areas like the US, the UK, Australia, New Zealand. So I actually go for .com because I want to keep it wide. Other ones that are quite good are .net as well. The other thing I would say is don't ever put hyphens in your domain name. I made the mistake of doing that at the beginning because there was a domain name I wanted, which was already taken. And I thought, it wasn't like brand specific, it wasn't copyright or anything like that. But I just liked it. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to use it with hyphens, because that was available. Hyphens are very difficult, because people don't think to type the hyphen in when you're telling someone what your domain name is, you've got to go blah, hyphen, blah, hyphen, which is a pain. So don't ever put hyphens in, it just isn't worth it. The other thing is, think about how your domain name sounds. For example, if you're going to put numbers in it, I'm not saying don't put numbers in it, but just remember that you are going to have to say to someone, like if it's three or three, is it the number three or is it T-H-R-E-E? So you've got to think about that when you're telling someone the domain name. If it's written down and they're just clicking through, then that's no problem. But it's just, you know, thinking about those things, how it's easy to to remember or difficult to remember. If your domain name is too long, that can be quite hard for people to remember. But there is a balance because, as I said, domains are not always easy to find. So you need to make sure that, A, you can find one and you're not sort of ruling yourself out there. But those are just some things to think about. The next thing to think about is your platform that you're going to blog on. Now, there are lots of ones out there. There's things like Wix, there's Squarespace. Um, Squarespace is very good if you want a very visual editor. So if you want to create the website and you literally want to, you know, drag and drop, I would say that is a good one. The only thing with Squarespace is there is a monthly fee. So you just need to factor that in, in terms of costs. What I always go for is WordPress.org. Now, confusingly, there is WordPress.com, which is like a platform like Blogger.com. So you don't fully own the website in that case. What you want, if you're going for WordPress, is a self-hosted WordPress um WordPress installed on a self-hosted site on a domain. So again, I do go into that in the free mini course, but that's what I always go for, simply because 
Yes, you pay for your domain and yes, you pay for hosting, but you absolutely own the site and anything going forward that you want to do with it, you can do. So you can sell it going forward, for example, um, and that can be a good option further down the track. So for example, if you've built a blog and your blog is earning, let's just say a thousand pounds or a thousand dollars per month, the the selling price of blogs like that are usually 30 times the monthly. Of course, it varies. Of course, it varies depending on your site and topics and all those kind of things. But that's like a ballpark. So you can see that if you if you build a blog up to a thousand dollars a month that it's earning, and I'll talk about monetization in a second, you've got uh, an asset worth around 30,000 there. So That's why I say build something that you fully own so you can do with it what you want to in the future. Also, there's no kind of, on some of the platforms, I'm not saying necessarily on WordPress or Blogger, but on some of the platforms, there are things that you can and can't do, like affiliate links. So you don't want to be sort of singled out in that way that you can or you can't do certain things. So I always go for WordPress and that means I need hosting. And again, when you're choosing your host, you can get some very good offers up front. Always look at what it is when it renews in the second year and also look at what it includes. So some will just offer purely the hosting. So the hosting is where your website lives. If you want other things like an SSL certificate, which is what turns the HTTP in a URL into HTTPS and it makes your site more secure. If you want extra security, if you want emails added in, if you want good support, make sure that you shop around and you find a host that gives you all those things. Now, the one I recommend and I use is SiteGround. And if you do want to see all my resources that I recommend for different things, hosting and all those kind of things, then you can head to nichelifesuccess.com forward slash resources and you'll find all the things that I recommend there. But SiteGround has been really good for me. I actually buy my domains and hosting in the same place. You don't have to. You can buy your domain elsewhere. Like, for example, a lot of people buy their domain on GoDaddy, for example, but you can still build your host, your site on SiteGround. So again, that's just another thing to think about. And again, check out the free course if you want more kind of slow step by step through this. So once you've got your hosting, if you're using WordPress, then you will need a theme. If you are building a blog, my recommendation is the free blogging theme cadence. I find it's like really quick to load, really easy to use for people that might not have a lot of experience blogging. If you're building more of a website for, say, a business, then I recommend Divi for the ease of use. And it's like a drag and drop. So again, it's it's easy for that. You can build blogs on it. I just find that I prefer Cadence for blogs. Again, they're all on my resources page if you want to check them out. The next thing, obviously, once you have your site set up, you are going to have to think about writing the content. So there's obviously things that you can do here to make your life easier. You can do keyword research in your niche to find out what people are searching for on the search engine. So there are tools that help you to find things. So for example, if I I was writing a site about cat toys, let's just say, or that was, you know, I've got a site about cats and that is one of my blog posts. I would put cat toys into the research tool and it would come up with some longer phrases. Now, the longer the phrase, the easier it is to rank in theory. It's not, it's not a perfect thing because some key phrases are very competitive and some are not so competitive. But for example, 
the word cat would be super, super competitive. If you put that into Google, there would be billions of results. Cat toys, still very competitive. So, you know, if you put that into Google, then there would be fewer results, but still too many for you to rank well for. So when you look in the research tool, it helps you to find things for longer key phrases. So it could be um, cat toys for young kitten or something. I'm just obviously doing this off the top of my head, but it will be longer phrases and then it will tell you how competitive that phrase is and whether you've got the chance to rank for it. Now, this is not a perfect science. It is just giving you that help to find phrases that will help you to know whether you can get onto the first page of Google for it. So obviously, the lower the competition, the more chance you stand of ranking well for it. There is also another tool. So there's a couple of tools here, Key Search and Rank IQ. Both of those are excellent. Rank IQ is amazing because it not only gives you the keywords, it, there's actually an optimizer in there. So you write your blog post, you put it into the optimizer and it will tell you what you need to change about that post to increase it to like an A++ to give you the best chance. So again, go to my resources page and you can find out about those. Some of the things on my resources page also have coupons, not all of them, but some of them have coupons for money off or additional sort of benefits. So check those out, nichelifesuccess.com forward slash resources. So keyword research are things that you can do blog topics. Obviously, you will probably have a lot of topics if you're writing about something that you know well. You can also look on like Google, what comes up when you search in Google. You can look in Pinterest. You can look on social media. These are all places to mine for amazing blog topics. So there's lots of things that you can do there to start opening your mind to all the different things that you can write about. The next thing is monetization. So obviously, don't go straight off the bat thinking purely only about the money. But at the end of the day, if you're doing this as a business, you want to know how you can monetize your site going forward. Now, there are different ways. There are things like banner advertising placed on your site. Good um, companies that do this for you are Mediavine. Now, you do have to have 50,000 views per month to get into Mediavine. So that obviously is if you're further down the track. However, Mediavine have just introduced a new platform for people with smaller amounts, and that's 10,000 per month. And that is called Journey by Mediavine. So again, that's another good option. How I've monetized from the beginning, so early on, is through affiliate links. So whatever your site is about, there will be companies that you can partner with to add sites, uh, yeah, links to your site where people, if they click through, they will, uh, you will earn an income from that and they will buy the product. It doesn't cost the person that clicks through anymore. The price is exactly the same. But because you've helped the company to get that sale, they will give you a small percentage. So obviously, perhaps one of the main ones is Amazon for that because they cover so many things. But don't think it's only Amazon. There are so many companies out there. There are also networks that help to connect you with lots of different companies. So there's things like Share a Sale. A win. There's lots of different ones that you can partner with. And also you can go direct with certain companies like Amazon, like Chewy, the pet based ones, but there's so many more. So Etsy has affiliate scheme, all of them, you know, most companies will have an affiliate. So if you're not sure, but you want to work with a certain company, the best thing to do is to go to their website, 
scroll right down to the bottom, look in the footer and see often it will have affiliates or something like that. And obviously it's not just products, it could be services, you know, for example, on my niche life success site, I am partnering with things like ConvertKit for uh, email providers. I'm partnering with SiteGround for hosting. Now, I always do use the things that I promote, particularly, obviously not on something like Amazon, where you're sharing different products and things. I've not bought every single product that I'm talking about, but then I don't claim to have done that either. However, if it's things that I use in my business, then I do use them so I can recommend them to you. So there's different ways to go down that route. As long as you are very transparent, you always need to have affiliate disclaimers on your site, There's certain rules, particularly around Amazon, with what you can and you can't do. For example, you can never put Amazon links in your email newsletters. You can only put them on your website. So if you want to drive people to those links, you would put them on your blog and then you would share that blog post with your um, viewers, basically. (laughs) And then they would go from your email list back to your blog. So, but there's other things, you can have sponsored posts, you can, you know, again, start additional things like a podcast or like a YouTube channel. So there's lots of ways to monetize. And again, that is in the mini course. The other thing I would do is always build an email list from the very beginning. Even if you want to start with a free one, start with something like MailerLite, because that gives you so many different options like you can have autoresponders which is an automatic email that goes out to people when they sign up but it's important to build a list from the beginning because that is going to be one of the most valuable things in your blog so to help you grow going forward obviously there's other things you can do to promote your blog you can go down the social media route lots of different ways now obviously on a podcast like this I'm not going to go into every single detail However, I want to just maybe start the cogs turning in your mind as to what's possible. And if starting a blog has always been something that you've been interested in, now might be the right time to do that. The other thing I will say is this is the long haul. I said it at the beginning. If you want to build a blog, if you want to monetize it, this isn't something you can start, write three blog posts and then never touch again. You need to be consistent. You need to be sharing to it regularly. That can mean whatever it is for you. It doesn't have to mean a blog post every day. It might mean one or two a week. Um, But you do have to be consistent if you want to build it. But also the other thing I would say is have fun with it. You know, this could be a side hustle. Obviously, don't launch into it thinking you're going to be earning lots of money overnight. You are not. It is going to take time to build up. And that's why I say the consistency is going to be so important. But it can be a good passive income stream for the longer term. So again, don't rush into something. Don't put all your eggs in one basket and think, I'm giving up my job and I'm going to start a blog. No, always start something on the side. If you're already earning, you know, in a, in a job, then start something on the side, build it up over time or add a blog to an existing website. If you have a business, because as I say, that could be another stream of income. It could be, you know, affiliates. You could, you can also offer on a blog courses or products or printables or downloads or print on demand products. There's so many different things that you can do. Again, I can't go into all of those things today, but maybe that's going to be sparking you to think about what you could do. And most importantly, as I said, have fun. Make sure it's something that you are going to enjoy for the longer term. So if you've enjoyed that and you think, you know, this actually could be for me, I'm not too sure, but I'd like a bit more information, then again, grab that free course at nichelifesuccess.com forward slash profit. I hope you have enjoyed the podcast today and I will be back with you next week. Bye for now.